three o'clock. So um, welcome everybody. Um, we're back again. It's lovely to see so many uh, familiar names, so many familiar faces, um, and some new names as well. So um, welcome along. Thanks, um, thanks everybody um, who is joining us today. Um, so those of you um, that have kind of tuned into to these conversations previously will know the kind of format. Um, we just kind of sit down and have a real kind of relaxed chat, basically. And this all started um, a few weeks ago when it was Admin Professionals Appreciation Week. Um, and I thought it'd be a good idea to, to kind of get some leading lights in the industry to come on camera and just run through their experience and, you know, their background and, you know, spread a bit of inspiration. Um, and that was really, really well received. So um, we've decided to keep going with it and, um, and, um, and cherry pick some inspirational figures within the industry and, and hear about their story. So as always, as I always say, um, nobody's here to, to listen to me. It's all about you, Meg. So um, welcome. Thanks for, um, you know, thanks for joining us. Um, you'll notice I haven't given you a full introduction. So I'm going to kind of leave that to you. Do you want to, uh, should we kick off the conversation by uh, running us through what you've been up to work-wise, how you got into your career and, um, you know, a bit of backstory. Yes, yes. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me and saying that I'm an inspiration to the industry and makes me feel all giddy and wanting to blush. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so I'm Meg Steinshower. For those of you who see my surname and want to run, run for the hills, it's not so difficult now that, now that I've said it. Um, I am originally from Johannesburg in South Africa, but I live here in the UK and I've been here for a couple of years now. Um, I'm an executive assistant at the moment and I'm also the founder of Connected Assistance and that is a support group for um, administrative professionals where we can, you know, openly and honestly come and talk to each other about our highs and our lows and our, what we're battling with and what we're really doing well at and um, really just to support each other with whatever we need support in. And um, I started that about eight months ago um, because I wanted some genuine connection. You know, if I was having some trouble with whatever, whatever project or possibly just needing somewhere to vent, I didn't exactly know where to go. So that's how, I, that's how Connected Assistance was born. But before all of this, how I got into being an EA, um, oh goodness. So this is about a 10 year story. <laughs> I'll make it short. <laughs> Um, but before being an executive assistant, I was doing um, sales and customer care. Um, my original qualification is in animal nutrition. So um, that's actually how I met my husband. Animal um, nutrition? Animal nutrition, yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. So, and did you, did you work in animal nutrition for a while? Or is, 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 did you have some work, work background in that? Yes. So I, I did. I used to do the sales. So people would come to me and ask, um, give me their pet ailments and I'd recommend feed and so on and on that basis. Yeah. So been, it was very interesting. I did that for a good couple of years. Yeah. Um, and before that, I used to do uh, conveyancing. I did reception work for a conveyancing firm. I uh, did all kinds of little bits. I even worked as a beautician for seven months. That yeah. was very interesting. I could write a book on that experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so one of my clients when I was an animal nutritionist, um, actually asked me to be his assistant and I didn't actually know what any of that was all about but then I said yeah sure let's go for it and um, that's how I became an executive assistant I then went and supported two executives at Nike Golf yes, um, yeah. I didn't know anything from you know about sports and then uh, you know all these famous chaps would walk in and I wouldn't know who they are and I'd be like yes sir no sir right let's get this done I didn't know I was speaking to famous people <laughs> <laughs> and whereabouts whereabouts was that was that was that in the uk or or back home so that was in south africa yeah, yeah fantastic so at nike golf being a i'm a i'm a huge sports fan and um nike is a brand that i, I follow a lot i just I, I recently read um shoe dog the um the story behind phil knight which if anybody um is into reading that's it's a, fan, it's a fantastic book to read not just it's not just about sports and what have you um but 
I know Nike kind of pride themselves on having a, an amazing um, company culture. Is is is? But that's what that's what from the outside is. Is that what it's like internally? I I have never worked anywhere like that. And mm. if they ask me to come back now, I will drop everything and go back in heartbeats. Uh, yeah. It was so beautiful. I worked incredibly hard there. Yeah. Um, as you can imagine, it's just, it's mm. full on, it's intense. Um, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was beautiful. Yeah. My favorite part was um, the, the strategic planning of apparel lines mm. and um, how all of that came together. So from, you know, placing the orders with the factories and yeah. the lead times and all of that, you know, I just found it so fascinating and how a beautiful project can come together from conception to completion. It just really yeah. blew my boat. <laughs> And who were you? Who were you working directly alongside there at Nike? What, what what was your kind of your main report there, and 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 kind of department wise? What was what did those guys do? Right up the the, the high level. So we did. I supported the two chaps right at the very top, okay. um, of the, the golf the, the the golf element of it, Nike Golf. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so that you was. Went, so you went straight into that without having any previous executive assistant experience. So yes, it was it was a major flip in anything yeah. I'd ever done. Yeah. I think what was my saving grace was I had experience in administration in the sense that I did conveyancing reception. So I understood the confidentiality and I understood, you know, the complexities that came with, you know, working in administration. Yeah. And um it was it was a major, major shift for me because I had to wear multiple different hats. Yeah. So I was coming from a predominantly like customer care type role, which, yeah. which did serve the sales element of what I did really well. So that worked well. Um, but I did have to find my feet really quickly with the strategic thinking, mm. but I found it to be so interesting that it almost came naturally in a sense. Yeah. And um, I was there for, for about three years and then we moved here. Yeah. And that's, and that's obviously kind of what, kind of where, where it went from there. So what was your, um, you know, what was your kind of, by the sounds of it, the role was ever changing, it was really varied and you had to do all these different things. What would you say, what, what did a kind of average week look like if there was an average week, should we say? Um, it really depended on the season yeah. because uh, we'd have golf, sort of golf day seasons whenever the open with the masters and all these things i can't even remember half of them yeah. but it really depended on on those seasons yeah. um but on average i would i would say a day consisted of having multiple meetings in the morning to see where we are and what we're going to do and just constant strategy making sure that we're keeping aligned to what yeah. it is that we want to do and where we want to go and um just keeping on top of you know the latest and greatest trends yeah amazing brilliant and so then um, you kind of, you, as you say, you, you came to London um, and then what was, what was the kind of career journey uh, from there when you, when you arrived in the UK? I was, I was very, I was a bit apprehensive because I'd never ever left South Africa. I'd been to a couple of neighboring countries, but I don't think that really counts because it's still yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah. um, I was a bit apprehensive because I wasn't sure what the, the working culture would be like. So um the the work ethic in where i was it was just constant you know like people would take leave and i wouldn't take leave people would go on holiday and i would never go on holiday yeah. and i wasn't sure what it was going to be like over here yeah. and um so i was pleasantly surprised when i i then landed a role at a company called nvidia so that's a technology company okay. and um then i just i found like my passion. I was like, I love technology and working with engineers and I want to support them forever. Yeah. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So there I ended up supporting the global vice president of the facilities. Yeah. And um, that was also very interesting. We had lots of people doing travel to multiple countries. And um, prior to, to that, I'd never really um, done travel, such complex travel for so many people. I like got it to a niche with one or two guys. Yeah. <laughs> but then I had like suddenly 150 people saying, well, I need to this week, I need to go to India and I need visas and I'm so-and-so is coming from the States. Can you please also organize my Esther? And I was like, oh, 
yes, fine. I never ever let them know that I was really afraid of what they were asking me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So it was a tech. It was a tech company. So what? What kind of things? Uh, what kind of things do they get involved with them? So that that was very interesting because yeah. we had um, multiple sort of things going on. So they did the chip design of uh, graphic processing units. Okay. Um, so they they did that for you know, like screens that go in cars. Yep. And we had a, a lab there that yep. people could come to and they could like, I, I still don't understand half the things yeah. they did because they had like funny boards with all kinds of like diodes and you name it. And that was yeah, yeah, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, good stuff. And what were your, what were your kind of um, data, you know, the day to day were you involved, you know, you were working at a senior level. So you were privy to all the kind of strategy and the, you know, and the background of the business, but what the kind of, average weeks look like from there? So when I was there, I took on a wonderful project. Mm. I sort of aligned myself with green initiatives. Yeah. So that took up a lot of my energy. And mm. one of the things that I did there was I applied for a grant to the council to get an electrical vehicle charging point put in. Okay. And um, so I ran surveys um, mm. across the site to see what people would do if we did that. Yeah. And um, I also then wanted to know more or less what it is that they wanted from green yeah. initiatives and sustainable commuting. So yeah. um, I ended up getting a grant from the council and having a electrical vehicle charging point, EVP, I'm going to say, um, yeah. installed. And that was met with a lot of enthusiasm. Sorry, sorry to, to interrupt, but how long ago was that? Because... Um, knowing a little bit about your career story it's not like the modern day where the it's not like today 2020 where these things are like fully you know like you see a lot of them right so how, how many years ago was that so that was in 2014 yeah so it wasn't it wasn't everywhere it no. wasn't yeah brilliant fantastic um and so how long were, how long were you with these guys for them I wasn't with them for very long, um, probably about a year, and then I was snatched up by one of their, their rivals. <laughs> oh, how did that go down? <laughs> um, oh, it was okay, because they were actually going through a restructure. They were closing off one business unit, so it was okay. Um, we're still friendly. <laughs> That's good. Always leave the door open. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, good, good, good. Um, and you've um, and uh, you were doing the same kind of thing there, was it? In, in pretty much same industry and you know, same technology and bits and pieces like that. Yes, and only there I started focusing a bit more on HR. Yeah. So I headed up um, an, an element of our Bristol office, um, yeah. their learning and development, and uh, that was very interesting. So people would have their performance reviews and then all of their learning and development requests would come through to me and I'd have to go and source all these things and arrange trainers to come in. And yeah. it was it was very interesting. Um, I did sort of take a step back in the sense of working part time because yeah. um, I had a little girl at that stage and I was pregnant yeah. with my second one. So um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And um i and you you've had one more move since then haven't you and it's um is it it's a footwear company is that is that right yes so now i work for a uh, footwear company doing yeah. they they do safety footwear so they design manufacture and distribute safety footwear and again it's um i'm supporting the the co-founder at the moment yeah. and um again it's just such a lovely role because i'm in it and i can i sort of see it from from the top down and i can see how it all works together and yeah. um i i very much enjoy strategy and seeing yeah. how it all works fantastic when you were talking about um when you were considering the move um from south africa over to the uk you made a comment about um you know Kind of thinking about what the the culture will be work-wise what would you say if there is any what are the kind of key differences in in um, working culture between the two from what you've seen if any honestly i don't think there is much difference um okay. i think south africa had a lot of influence from britain so i yeah. think we've got all your good habits <laughs> How about the really bad ones? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. 
yeah, we're <laughs> there's none of that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what um, I know a lot of people, um, I know a lot of people will be really interested to hear the backstory of your network and the um, and the bits and pieces that you're doing and, and really developing that. So um, give us a little overview about the about the association and how it all came about and you know the bits and pieces that you do because um, um, it would be great to to shine the spotlight on that. Oh thank you I really appreciate that so I started it about eight months ago mm -hmm. and um, I wanted you know a group of us to get together on a monthly basis and discuss what's worked well what hasn't worked well and how we can best support each other and that is fundamentally what it was always meant to be and um, I'm very pleased that that is what it is so I have virtual coffees on a monthly basis now the last Wednesday of every month and yep. we've got people joining us from all over the world and um, that's really interesting because you know we talk about strategies and um, you know we, we, we can talk about whatever comes up it's yeah. very chilled out and um, it's almost like a little group of like a sisterhood with a couple of brothers. It's really yeah. nice. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, so I started it and it sort of developed into this, this, this platform where I am helping people connect with themselves. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of coaching in, um, you know, strategic thinking and strategic partnering and yeah. you know, how to, lots of how to's yeah. and, um, and then also how to connect with your organization so there's yeah. a lot of productivity in there as well so I teach um, some OneNote classes I can teach about Outlook and it all comes from my personal experience and what works yeah. for me and yeah. then um, I've got the little connect with your community as well yeah and um, I'm working on which hasn't been published yet so I'm gonna say it here I'm um, sure. working on some courses as well so I've written a course on building confidence um, because it's been that's been quite a journey for me from feeling like oh I don't know how to do this to actually being you know what um, I that is something that's in my wheelhouse and I know that and learning how to actually speak up um, and have a voice yeah fantastic Brilliant. I mean, it's, um, I think that, as you know, I love initiatives like that. I think it's, I think it's important to have it. I think it's important to have it for every industry. Um, and especially the industry that, that, that we kind of service a lot between us, you know, I, and, and all of these things, um, having seen firsthand over the last kind of eight weeks, the sense of bringing a whole bunch of people together, is a wonderful feeling. We had a we had a webinar yesterday, and everyone was kind of chatting between themselves. It was, you know, so nice to kind of ha like kind of have that support network around you, um, especially in this moment as well. So um, yeah, I think I think it's great, and anybody that kind of takes the time to go off and do something like that, um, in my opinion, deserves um, you know a, a big pat on the back. So what was what was the kind of motivation behind um, behind doing it? Was there was there some kind of series of triggers which you thought, oh, OK, you know, I could do with some help behind this or what was what was the motivation behind getting it all up and running? So I had a couple of friends who were feeling really frustrated in the sense that um, as an as a, I'm going to say as executive assistants, we've mm. got a, a sort of. Um, profile that we have to have within an organization in the sense yeah. that we have to be able to represent the company in a way so if mm. somebody is starting you know they come through to the water cooler and they want to say well your CEO has just made the most incredibly insane comment and I think XYZ and I think we've all been there where there's like gossipy things go going on and um, I I wholeheartedly believe that as executive assistants and as humans in general, we mm. have to protect the integrity of our own integrity and that of everybody else. Mm. So I was like, how am I going to help people sort mm. of, you know, maybe adopt that mindset or see the benefits of something like that? Mm. Um, and even if it is just the five people who I knew who were battling with, you know, not having a place to go when they've got a frustration or, you know, they want to vent about something, even if it was just those five people, I, f I would feel that, you know, I would have accomplished something. And yeah. as we are now, we've got nearly 600 people. And yeah. um, I really enjoy, I really enjoy the variety of, you know, speaking to all these people with all their different 
you know, situations that have come along their paths mm -hmm. and looking at ways to, to help them protect their integrity and that of everybody else as well. Amazing. And that's, um, uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's a great motivation to, to kind of put it all together. So how can people get involved with the network and, and with the group? How can, how can they get in contact with, uh, with it and sign up and become members? Great. So I have got the group here on LinkedIn, so you can search for it that way. But you can also go to connectedassistance.com and on the home page, you'll see that there's the three options and select the connect with your community, which will link you through to the, the community charter, which okay. is a place where I've got uh, some ethics and guidelines and, you know, just general practices where everybody is safe to speak. Oh, yes, I can write the link here. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that you can just request access to it and... Um, if you're an administrative professional, you're in. Good stuff. That's that's what we like to hear. So um, I want to give everybody kind of forewarning because um, um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a couple more questions uh, with Meg. But if anybody has got some questions that they would like to pose, start having to kind of think about them now and um, start popping them in the um, in the chat box um, if if you want, and then we can come back to those in a second. Um, Something that I've picked up on this conversation is that you have, um, it seems that you're kind of going through a bit of a um, transition into, you know, having done the EA work, having built up lots of experience, you're now giving a lot back, you've written your course, you're doing kind of coaching, training, bits and pieces like that. What does the future hold for you? And is that something that, is that a side of things that you really want to, to kind of, you know, investigate a whole lot more? I, I have always been somebody who enjoys helping other people feel successful. Yeah. And um, I think that was very, that's why customer care and sales is really natural to me because I enjoyed making people happy and making their pets healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and I think that's why being an executive assistant has just been so lovely for me as well. I really yeah. enjoy that. Um, I am thoroughly enjoying being a coach and mentor. Um, the connections that I've made yeah. with the people that I'm mentoring and coaching, which are two completely different things. <laughs> um, I feel that those are very profound. I don't know what the future holds. Yeah. Um, I very much enjoy being an executive assistant because it, yeah. it's varied. It's always different. And I get to be involved in strategy and you know high level thinking. Yeah. Um, but I also very much enjoy the personal touch of yeah. coaching and mentoring. So yeah. perhaps it'll be a bit of both, but I might lean towards one. <laughs> yeah. I've got a feeling I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to just put it out there. I've got a feeling just from, you know, having this conversation and the way that you present yourself and the way that you talk, I've got a feeling that we're going to see quite a bit more of you um, over the years to come in, um, you know, in, I can, yeah, I can just, I've just got a feeling you can kind of see, you, know, you can kind of see it. Um, so um, let's see, let, let, let's see, let's see what the future holds. Normally I ask these questions, um, normally I ask these questions the other way around. So it's my fault because it normally ends on that question. But what I normally, what I normally ask before then, um, uh, what, what I normally ask before then is what kind of, a, I always like to, to kind of, leave it with what kind of advice would you have given yourself um, today, you know, 10 years ago, and what's the best piece of advice that you can give to people that have been watching, trying to find their way as an EA and what have you, based on the experience that, that you've gleaned over the years? Very, very easy for me to say now. And if you told me, asked me this question 10 years ago, mm -hmm. whew, only I'd done this. Yeah. It is to take the time to review, reflect, and possibly change direction if you need to. And that can be something as simple as at the end of every week, just going, Monday wasn't a great day because so-and-so spoke to me in this way. Address that, because that is something that could possibly fester. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just really take the time to review and reflect and know yourself. Yeah. Once you have journal that, 
you know, do it digitally, however you want to do that, but look back and how you're feeling and how you are, you know, coping with the situations that have come your way, because you will, without a doubt, be able to see a pattern in your own growth and, um, you know, a pattern in situations that you find yourself in and how to actually create boundaries. You'll learn a lot about yourself, what you like and what you don't like by mm -hmm. taking a moment to reflect. I wholeheartedly recommend everybody does that. Brilliant. I think that's, um, I think that's fantastic advice. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And um, I think that's a, that's a, a, a brilliant way to, um, to kind of to wrap up the conversation. Um, it's been great having you on. Let's see if we've, let's see if, if we've got any questions. Uh, somebody's messaged me privately saying, are you allowed to mention the name of the footwear company that you, that you work for at the moment? Uh, you can probably see it on my LinkedIn profile. Yes. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like that answer. Um, has anyone else got any questions for Meg? Um, if any, I always say this, if anyone wants to come off mute, that's always good fun. We like that. We like it when people come off mute. So, you know, those of you that know us well by now, we're, you know, we're all very open and, you know, like the conversation. Um, whilst, we're, whilst we're giving people a chance to do that, um, it seems like you've got some great things, um, great things on offer, Meg. And if um, if you'd love to come back and share some thoughts on a webinar with some kind of mentoring and coaching, um, I'd love to have you back on if if that's something you'd go up for. Yes. Well, um, I'd actually really love to possibly do the first bit of my course. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, so we'll talk about the, that. Yeah. What's the, what's the first bit of your course then? All right, so I'll share this with you all. Okay. Um, it hasn't gone out yet, but yeah. basically I have modeled my, my course on act as a barometer. You can yeah. build confidence by acting as a barometer. And the acronym over there is ACT. Mm -hmm. So what I teach you in this course is first to create an awareness of yourself and an awareness of what you like and what you don't like how you work, how you don't want to work, what kind of boundaries you need. And once you have an awareness of yourself and your working style and your ethics and the way that you represent yourself in your body language, you know, once you have a, a whole awareness, you can move into communication. And communication is within your organization. So go and spend time with all these different organizations, uh, sorry, all these different people within your organization. Spend mm -hmm. half an hour every week and learn the business. Build up your business, your business acumen and create an awareness of, the, of your organization. So you've got the first two, which is awareness and communication. And once you have those two nailed down, you can move into transformation. Brilliant. And once you've become this transformed person, you'll feel more confident and you can naturally start leaning into becoming an expert in yeah. something, whatever that is. Yeah. My, my expertise is technically um, data science. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love having my head in Excel and building pivot charts and pivot tables and reading these things. I love it. Uh, it's not everybody's forte, yeah. but um, so I, I did that and I developed, you know, expertise in that. So that is, that is the very essence of um, my building confidence course. And at the end of it, um, you'll be able to sit at the at, at a table full of executives or board members, and you'll have an awareness, you'll have communication nailed down, and you'll be an expert, and you'll know what to say. You won't feel like you don't know what to say, and you won't feel uh, in confident. And unconfident, inconfident. Oh, my goodness, I can't speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, look, I, look if it's... Um... I think we'll, we'll discuss this. We'll discuss this further. But I'm I'm adding you to um, to my list for um, for the for, for June now. So um, we'll we'll definitely get that booked in. I can see some people nodding and smiling. So I think <laughs> um, I think I think it'll be well received. So yeah, that'll be amazing to have you back. Thank you for. Uh, sorry to put you on the spot. First of all, but, and and thank you for like being steamrolled and agreeing agreeing to it. Um, <laughs> We've, um, we've had a question come through and it's um it's based around how you would um um somebody's asking how you would sell yourself as an ea um which I, I like that as a question yeah that is a good question well 
every single interview I've ever gone to, I have just been myself. I am quirky. I am open and honest. You know, if somebody throws a question at me and I go, look, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. Mm. Um, so I've only ever been honest. So how I sell myself as an EA is depending on the questions that they show, you know, chug my way. It's usually, um, you know, can you explain to me what you did during this time and what, what were your key accomplishments and so forth. So I'll talk about those. But one thing that I always say is um, I, I make a note of, you know, where I faulted as well, where I made mistakes and how I fixed it and how I've learned from them. So I think um, always being open and honest about who you actually are and what your values are um, is more important you know, than, than the job itself. Because if you're going to be spending, you know, so much time somewhere, you absolutely have to be happy with, you know, the company's culture and their set of values and making sure that that aligns to yours. So yeah. I don't think you should go into any role. Um, and I've never done this going into any role going, you know, I need this because I need the paycheck. I need this because, you know, I want to be an EA and I want to work and I want to make people successful. So um, I sell myself by being open and honest about who I am. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. And there's a lot to be said for that. And um, in my day job, if you like, of, of recruitment, a lot of people ask me about interview tips and techniques and what have you. And, you know, that's the first thing that you say is, you know, be yourself because, you know, that's, that's what people want to see, you know, and, you know, people want to see the real, the real person, don't they? So I, yeah, I like that as, as, um, yeah, I like that a lot as an example. Um, so brilliant. Well, look, we've, um, we've run over ever so slightly, um, but it's been, but it's been an absolute, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I've really enjoyed your story and looking at the reaction of, of, of people that I can see nodding and smiling and what have you, it seems that, um everybody else has as well um we're getting yeah we're getting some nice comments coming through saying thank you great chat and, and everything else so um you know i just want to take this opportunity to on behalf of everybody just to say thank you so much for giving up your time i know you've just recently gone back to work so it's pretty so it's pretty hectic so you know fitting this in we really appreciate you giving up your time today sharing the story thanks to everyone that's um that's joined us as always and and um and thanks for the support oh no thank you so much for having me and thank you for everybody else you know for like choosing to spend your time with paul and i that's really lovely of you thank you yeah it's really lovely uh, i i i couldn't second that more every time i put the i hit the button to say end session i always kind of come away and think that's so nice that people have kind of taken that time so um i echo that thank you everyone really appreciate it great choice of speaker look at that oh yeah. my gosh can you see i'm blushing here <laughs> when's the webinar they're saying when's the coaching no nobody's never said that no they're not, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all thinking it so we'll get it, all, we'll, we'll get it booked in for a couple of weeks time and we'll let everybody know <laughs> brilliant well look thank you so much have a great afternoon everyone and thanks for your time meg Thank you very much. You take care. Bye. Thank you. Cheers, guys.